Oh look, it's another Mailbag Monday. What should I open first? How about this? Bumper Shine Winter Warmer from Torque Brewing right here in Winnipeg. Eight and a half percent alcohol by volume. What does it say about it? It is smooth, sweet, warming, flavorful. Pair with crisp sunny days and cold noses. If you're not from any place that it gets cold enough to for there to be ice on the streets, you can look up what bumper shining is. I assume that this would be the perfect beer to put with it. Well, any beer would be. Although it's more a kid's activity because us old beer drinkers tend to break easily. Oh, look at the color of that. That's awesome. That's what I'm talking about. Mmm. Mmm. A little bit of spiced. I'm not sure. Hmm. Not too hoppy. A little bit malty. Bit of kind of that spiced rum sort of spice in it. Definitely a good winter beer. Right, let's get at these things. What do we have? Expansion board module. Yeah, that pretty much is an expansion module. What are you? What are you? Deek Robot. Input micro USB 5 volts, output USB 1.8 volts, 3.3 volts, 5 volts, 9 volts, and 12 volts. Okay, that's a clever little thing. It's basically a DC to DC converter. So, input there. Okay, let's do that. Okay. There is a source of 5 volts. Ta-da! We have a light. Um, this little switch here says 9 volts in the that position and 12 volts in that position. Okay. Uh, let's get this guy in DC voltage. Um, is that an output? It is. It is 11.88 volts. I'm going to guess it's 9 volts when I do that. Yep. All right, hang on. Let's get a USB voltmeter. Plug that into the obvious place. Come on. Ooh, that's tight. There we go. Flip around 5.2 volts. That'll do nicely. Uh, see what happens. We put a load on it. Sinks down to four even. Uh, 0.66 amps. Even though this thing, this load claims to be doing one amp, or it's well, if you math it out at a full five volts, it is. So that sags down a little bit. All right. Let's check on the other voltages. Um, oh, pins are a little bit bent there. That should be 1.8, and it is, pretty much. 3.3, as expected. That ought to be about 5, I'm thinking, yeah. And that should be the 9 or 12, I think. Yeah, it's 9, and flick that guy. And it's... 11.87. Okay, so it's boosting. Let's unplug these things from there. So, I'm going to guess that uh, this chip and this are a boost converter to get from 5 up to the 9 and 12. And 5 volts just comes straight across, probably. Um, and these two are going to be linear regulators 
Focus. Damn it. Come on. Okay, that is uh one 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 seven three point three. And that is a one 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 seven. Can you even see that? Uh one point eight version. Okay. So those are good for what, half an amp or so. Boost converter, not entirely certain. That's a handy dandy little multi voltage source. And just powered off your typical 5 volt USB supply. Cool. Micro USB 5 volts to 1.8, 3.3, 5, 5, 9, and 12 volt power module breakout DC DC. From Good Module for the princely sum of a dollar ninety seven Canadian. That's pretty neat. So we already looked at it. I'm not going to spend too much time looking at the details. Except to see if it says anything about current. And it doesn't really. Oh, 500 milliamps. There we go. Uh, the largest can reach 500 milliamps. Okay. I mean, you're not going to power a massive string of LEDs or something off it. But just if you need a bunch of different voltages, that's slick. Next thing in, generic business industrial with no other clues. I prefer it when they lie rather than when they're vague. It's much more entertaining that way. Oh, okay. That's a whole bunch of pin hitters in a rainbow of colors. And then they use cling film to bundle them together, not tape so I don't have goo over them. That's nice. What do you got here? Looks like two of each color. Um, you got yellow, red, green, black, white, and blue. That's pretty slick. That is, uh, where are we here? Header pins. And I've got tons of header pins in black. Um, and those are good for all kinds of generic things. But sometimes it'd be nice to just mark where the inputs or the and outputs or power or something is. I think that'd be really handy. 12 pieces new multicolor 2.54 millimeter 1 by 40 pin male single row pin header for Arduino DIY. From Mayolino you do zero that one right there uh cost me dollar 30 canadian 99 cents american for six different what it says 12 pieces two three four five six seven eight nine ten there's actually ten of them let me just two four six seven well no, I did get 12. There's only 10 in the picture, but I actually got 12. And in the same package from the same seller, well, I have to assume it's from the same seller, this little roll of, what is this? The backing says 3M, so it's some kind of adhesive. Double coated tissue tape. Um, okay, it's, it is a double-sided tape. It's kind of thick. I'm going to have to go and see what it is. I think it's either mounting tape, because I think I ordered some of that, or it's thermal transfer adhesive tape stuff. I'll have to check. Okay, yeah, it is thermal transfer, 0.5 meters long, 4 centimeters wide, 3M double-sided thermal adhesive tape for CPU heatsink. Again, from MyLianLu0, um, 99 British pence or $1.82 Canadian. And again, what I got looks very little like that. That would be astounding if I got that much, but what the description says is 0.5 meters and 
So 500 or 50 mil centimeters, 500 millimeters if you want to be like that. Four centimeters wide. Just glancing over at the bench. Yeah, it looks about like that. Okay. Uh, does it say anything about its magical thermal transfer properties? No, it doesn't. It says expansion board module. Two different ones. There we go. That's the kind of lies we love and expect. Okay, let's start here. These are little test clips that, uh, let's zoom in a little bit on it so you can see it. They're nice and narrow, so you can stack them side by side when they're on a board. And the actual test gripper, let's see if we can get it focused a little bit better here. They're just these tiny little leaves here that go out. I've got some other test clips of, of this persuasion, which are also for grabbing onto component leads. But if you look at the difference between them, you know, those ones are much finer pitch. Those should be able to get onto the legs of a dip IC. Matter of fact, let me zoom out a little bit and grab our old favorite here and if these are what I'm hoping for I've done this wrong already but that's okay I should be able to get in there onto multiple pins without shorting against each other that's the trick not shorting against each other Let's zoom in a little tighter. Yeah, look at that. On four adjacent pins, nothing's touching or shorting. Had I tried that with these kind, let's get into it. Well, I can't even actually get in between the pins there. Maybe get onto one. Oh, no. These are good for doing things like that and holding on, but not that. So that's excellent. And I got a total of eight of those. So that's enough to get all the pins on there or eight bits of an 8-bit data line uh, and go into the logic probe. Four pieces test clamp, wire hook test clip, four logic analyzer electronic components from Alice, 1101-1983, our old friend. I uh, paid $1.52 each and I bought two sets of four so that I could get eight bits worth. Does it say anything special about it down here? Length about 23 centimeters, color random. Yeah, that's exactly what they are. Those are going to be useful. So also from Alice in the same package, this little tool here, and I think, er, well, they've really packaged it in there solidly. It's a little vacuum pickup tool. Um, this is Damage in shipping is what it is. That's uh, not performance. So we got some little tips in here. Three little soft rubber tips. Drag them out. And what they are for, what this tool's for, is it does work okay pushing this button causes a little uh, vacuum pump in here um, squeezing the button pushes the air out releasing it sucks the air back in then there's a soft little rubber surface on here and hang on for just a moment okay what this guy is for is picking up and 
and manipulating these ridiculously tiny little surface mount components that are such a pain in the in the butt to handle. Hmm. Chips kind of leaking. Probably because this tip is kinked and damaged. Well, that's annoying. Um, that looks like, though, a blunted off syringe needle, doesn't it? Wonder if I can order more of those. Well, I'll have to see what I can uh, what I can f get. Maybe uh, the seller will. But anyway, you can sort of see what happens before the air leaks down here. It sort of picks it up with suction, right? But if that suction would hold, then. You just pick it up and place it gently into place there um, when you're working with them. That's disappointing. So here it is. Uh, SMD IC vacuum sucking pin picker pick can tool. And there's two different model numbers. This is the one that I got, the FFQ939. The other one on the page is that one, uh, the MT668 which does come with replacement tips. Mine, however, doesn't, and it arrived broken. Uh, from Alice, 110, 1983, uh, 62 Canadian. Uh, descriptions, cable, XLQ, blah, 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 the whole part number. That's very specific, yet not terribly informative. Oh, looks like a USB cable. Okay. Hmm. Nice, fancy little black and white with gold, memories of gold kind of connectors on it. Oh, it's got a USB micro. Where's that thing that we just got here? Yeah, okay. It's got a USB micro. Doink. And what is this adapter? That's a USB-C, isn't it? Yeah, it's a USB-C. They're kind of uh, unisex, one size fits all. Okay, I don't actually have any devices yet that use that. There might be something kicking around at work. Regardless, I've ordered a bunch of uh, random uh, USB cables. I've got some kicking around here from the dollar store and a few that came with phones and whatnot. Um, but I just wanted to have some more around just for general utility. I have noticed the ones I got from the dollar store, um, like this one back here and the one that's plugged into my phone right now, just keeping it charged. Um, they won't pass huge amounts of current so i grabbed a random assortment of these off ebay and as they trickle in and as a few other things trickle in i'm going to figure out a way to test them and uh, and see if they're crap or if they're good if they're good i'll keep them for charging things if they're crap i guess i'll cut the ends off them and use them for ends for projects let's see how much this one cost me V8 micro USB type C combo mail data charging cable for various phones that I'm not going to bother pronouncing from top poot to poot. Mm. Uh, I won this at auction for door 31 Canadian, which was a buck American. What is it? Hello. Say something. Um, 
great replacement for your cell phone's original cable compatible with any cell phone with micro USB or type C one meter super pure not just regular pure but super pure deoxidized copper core noise and the last thing for today again a very specific description here they're not inaccurate just kind of useless oh 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 a screwdriver but not just any screwdriver if you guys I'm not sure why this excites me so much but this is the same type of screwdriver that Big Clive uses I'm I think that's the only reason I bought it when I spotted it I haven't seen them in the dollar stores around here I'm very confident that's where he gets his in the pound shops but it's a blue anodized aluminum multi-bit screwdriver with storage in handle what does it come with here one two three four straight blades and three phillips ish ones um all different sizes this one's pretty blunt and stubby uh this would be easier for you to see if i did that there we go um this one's pretty blunt and stubby okay how does that compare with the variety that i've got? well i mean it's obviously less variety than the 30 piece one or whatever that i've got but how do the bits compare ah They look mostly like they, they overlap, okay. Uh, although that widest one, I don't think I have. And this kind of blunt, stubby one, which is good for poking and prying, that I don't have in the kit that I've got. That's nice. Oh, there's a magnet in the back there. Holds in nice and solidly. That's good. Pocket clip. Yeah. What more do you want from a cheap screwdriver set? mini protable precision eight in one slotted bits repair screwdriver pen hand tool set color obviously i selected blue uh from from hk999 was the seller okay so hong kong clearly yes it says so right down there dollar 64 canadian dollar 25 american and yeah, there's many like it. That one's more like the kit that I've already got. It never hurts to have more tools. And there it is. The contents of today's mailbag. Happy with those. Those will be useful. That I'll test out at some point in the future. That thing's probably going to be handy. Just having another source of uh, random voltage around. Screwdrivers are always useful. Heat sink compound, great. This thing could have been good if it hadn't been smashed in the uh, in shipping in the post office. Not sure what they could have done better at the shipping end. Perhaps put it in a box rather than a padded envelope. Um, but I'll have to figure out what to do about that at some point. Not that I'm in a big hurry. I'm not doing a hell of a lot of uh, surface mount soldering anyway. But besides that disappointment, I am pleased. This is great. I have more stuff. And this is good too. Who was this again? This is from my local Turk Brewery, Bumper Shine. Yeah, nice winter warm up beer. Thanks for watching. I have fun doing these. I hope you guys are enjoying them too. Um, if you have any any comments about this, questions, if you're pointing out something that I did that was did or said that was stupid, please leave it in the comments below. Um, and as always, I will talk to you again soon.